So we're going to talk about the double effect evaporator lab. And it's us. Okay, so double effect evaporator is part of the multiple effect evaporator. And what multiple effect evaporator is, uh, it's a pair test that you really want to get from steam to evaporate water. And it is the most efficient evaporator form of the industry. And the reason why is that compared to the single effect evaporator, it, has, is, it is more, much more easier to lower the vacuum pressure, which means it is more, very much efficient with the power too. And it's, it is mainly used for the purification and also the concentration control of the dilute solution. And how it used in the industry, so in the pulp and paper industry, there's a thing called blackly pulp, which is a white product of them. And by using a multiple effect evaporator, you can control the concentration of the blackly pulp. And for the sugar production industry, it cannot like crystallize to the crystallization itself, but like by reducing the water in the sugar solution, you can use that, uh, that as a controlling the sugar concentration in it, and also the water recovery. And for the food production industry, the purity is important in that portion, so you can use multiple evaporate, multiple effect evaporator for that industry too. And so just to continue on the background a little bit, the way that, that these actually work uh, on a unit basis is that steam and water are fed into the first effect, and basically the steam heats the water and it boils, and then the steam from that effect goes into the next effect, and it basically continues for as many uh, units as you want. There's, uh, like in the pulp and paper industry, I, I believe that there were some that were, were even, I think, octuple effect uh, evaporators, so they can get pretty big. Um, and so basically, uh, part of the way that they're able to do this efficiently, um, able to, to purify things uh, efficiently, is by lowering the boiling points by introducing a vacuum um, in each uh, subsequent stage. And so uh, that helps lower the boil, boiling point, and then you need less energy to boil that water, basically. Uh, and so the final effects, um, steam, it gets condensed by uh, cooling water, as you guys will see in the lab. And so basically, our lab is, is kind of like three columns, because there's, there's the two that are actually doing it, the double effects, and then there's the uh, condensing column, um, where you get the purified water. And then so safety concerns. Always got to think about safety, very important. So the main one with this lab is just heat. Uh, just stay away from pretty much everything that you would expect to be hot, i.e. the steam feed pipes and the effects themselves. Basically, if it looks like it's probably hot, it's probably hot, don't touch it. Unless you're DMAC, because he can go in there and touch anything and be fine. But, uh, and then, of course, if you were running this in industry, there could be um, other like caustic materials or potentially toxic materials that you're working with to try to purify. And obviously, in industry, you've gotta be mindful of those as well. And then the steam pressure, depending on, we aren't using crazy pressure downstairs, obviously, but in actual industry, if you were using really high pressure steam, that can also be an issue if there's a leak, because uh, it can basically turn into like a knife. Um, and then, of course, Horse. horse play and general nonsense, I, I don't think should be uh, anywhere near this lab. Uh, any kind of tripping, you know, any mischief really. It's just all bad, all bad. And then so just to get into some theory, uh, we've got several metrics on kind of how to uh, quantify uh, the efficiency of the evaporators. And so some of them, uh, like steam economy, that's based mostly on the mass of the steam in and out. Um, the capacity is just basically how much, uh, uh, how much steam can be produced, i.e. how much condensed water can we make um, based, uh, given the amount of steam into the uh, column. And then of course, energy efficiency, which is pretty straightforward. And as you can see here, we've got our nice, uh, 
PFD and or well P and ID. Yep. PFD. Yep. <laughs> Don't let Bernard say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And as you can see it's pretty straightforward. Here's our two effects and then the uh, condensing column. And yeah, it's it's honestly really straightforward. So in terms of the steam economy, this is a mass basis, as I said, for quantifying the functionality of your evaporators. It's the amount of steam that you can generate through the evaporator train for a single unit of mass that you put in. And so basically, if you have no heat loss uh, and you put in saturated steam, as it condenses out, you're going to get the heat of evaporation uh, transferring into the water component of your system. And that means that the same amount of heat of con uh, evaporation that exited the steam would go into the water, and you could theoretically evaporate equally as much water if you had no heat loss. Um, and so Dr. Aston earlier told us that the theoretical maximum uh, steam economy you can have is one to one. That's actually not true, it's higher. And so it's because you don't have to have the same pressure and the steam going in could actually be superheated. So there's actually a lot of variability in here because if you had uh, two effects or even just one effect and you can then superheat the steam at the same pressure uh, and atmospheric pressure, you're going to get considerably more steam than the single pound of steam because you're ignoring the amount of energy that was originating in the system. Or if you dropped the vacuum as you went to another effect, you could boil off more just because the boiling point is lower. So there's a little bit of play going on in there. Um, uh, capacity is based off of the rate of uh, evaporation or the amount of condensate that you can form. Basically, you can't evaporate water faster than you can, add, you can add energy to the water. So you're limited by the heat transfer rate. Um, functionally, that looks like the rate of mass production of uh, condensate, which means that you can actually measure what's coming out of the bottom of your evaporators if you want to figure that out. But theoretically, it also comes from the uh, UA delta T over delta H of app, which means that when you're actually operating things, what we don't know on this system is what the U number is on that equation. So that's one of the things you'll identify in the lab. Uh, but that can change over time as you operate in a real system because you can have fouling, which will change the thermal conductivity of the system. And so then in terms of efficiency concerns, because steam economy only talks about efficient, uh, efficiency in terms of mass, basically you couldn't actually just quantify everything about a system through that alone. You'd have to do more. Um, for example, you might say this is a much better economy, but to get there you had to spend a lot of money on pumps to get a vacuum out, so it might actually be a bad choice even though it's technically higher steam economy. Um, and you could add more effects to increase your economy, but a whole effect costs a lot. So when you get diminishing turns per effect, that might still be a bad choice. And as I said, you know, you could have higher superheated steam, so you get more heat per pound, and it's not really giving a clear picture until you actually look at the heat going into each part. So it's a very simple lab. You go in, you'll measure how much water comes out of things, and basically you can back out all of those different What's the, uh, what was your guys' calculated surface area for the uh, ring thing? It's almost exactly half a square meter, wasn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, it was something, it was a nice number. Nice, okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's very clearly engineered to be not hard to do <laughs> in contrast to the other labs. So. there and uh, like start up and shut down did you did you have to do any of that and was there any complications that are were like initially or was uh, it already running at steady speed when you got there uh, no when we got there uh, we had to turn on the steam and you just have to turn it on all the way down the line and or <coughs> upstream I guess and then you turn on yeah the, the steam and then it it comes and part of the lab is just managing uh, the steam pressure and just because you you have a little uh, switch that adjusts how much steam is coming into the system, and, and as the steam goes through the uh, system, the pressure changes slightly. So you have to kind of watch it and keep it at what was it, fifteen? Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen psi. Yeah. Okay. 
And so yeah, it, and so as you can probably tell, those pressures aren't crazy. So that's yeah. part of the safety stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, it took you how long to get it there, though? It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Almost <laughs> entire time. <laughs> <laughs> So that was us uh, measuring the uh, condensate out of the first column, and basically we, you just measure the volume and time, how long it takes to fill that volume, and then you've got uh, like the volumetric flow of the condensate, and then that's in equilibrium with, um, with the steam, and so you can tell how fast the steam is, is coming in, basically through some calculation. There's no flow meters on there, it's kind of the key issue. Yeah. But oh. you can collect the water from the drain to sewer, and so that's the proxy. Gotcha. Uh, oh, and the pump didn't work quite right on the vacuum, so okay. when you do it, <laughs> watch that. Yeah, nice. It started just pumping it down to way lower than it was supposed to be, nice. which screwed up the data when we were trying yeah. to do one of our trials. Interesting. That's funny, because Parker was talking so much about how good it was. That's like all he talked about when he was showing us, and he was like, this is going to work so well. <laughs> um, yeah, probably the darn interns they hired this summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so basically yeah. two, but one of them kind of sucks. Yeah, so basically, so basically one. One, <laughs> one reliable data. Yeah. I mean, in terms of statistical significance, I wouldn't worry about it that much because there's not much variance in the system. If we looked at the charts, it like just went flat. Yep. You're done. You get to steady state and it just sits there. So it's really easy. Nice. Whoever has it for the individual reports is lucky. That's a no food case, actually. Do you have it next? Yeah, we have it next. <coughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>